Sergeants, can we please start the recordings? PC recording on the way. Cloud recording started. Backup is rolling. Good. Thank you, Sergeant Polite. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to the remote hearing on zoning and franchises. Will council members and staff please turn on their video at this time? Thank you. To minimize disruptions, please place our cell phones and electronics to vibrate. You may send your testimony to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Once again, that's land, land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Chair, we are ready to begin. Uh, thank you and good morning. Uh, my name is Council Member Francisco Moya. I'm the chair of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. Uh, I'm joined remotely today by Council Members Gredenchik, Ayala, and Rivera. Uh, today we will hold a public hearing on the Broadway and 11th Street rezoning relating to property located in Queens and the 130th uh, St. Felix Street proposal relating to property located in Brooklyn. Before we begin, uh, I will recognize the subcommittee council to review the remote uh, meeting procedures. Thank you, Chair Moya. I am Arthur Ha, counsel to this subcommittee. Members of the public wishing to testify were asked to register for today's hearings. If you wish to testify and have not already registered, we ask that you please do so now by visiting the New York City Council website at www.council.nyc.gov forward slash land use www.council.nyc.gov forward slash land use. Members of the public may also view a live stream broadcast of this meeting at the council's website. As a technical note for the benefit of the viewing public, if you need an accessible version of any of the presentations shown this morning, shown today, uh, please send an email request to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. When called to testify, individuals appearing before the subcommittee will remain muted and still recognized by the chair to speak. Applicant teams will be recognized as a group and called first, followed by members of the public. When the chair recognizes you, your microphone will be unmuted. Please take a moment to check your device and confirm that your microphone is on before you begin speaking. Public testimony will be limited to two minutes per witness. If you have additional testimony you would like the subcommittee to consider, or if you have written testimony you would like to submit instead of appearing before the subcommittee, you may email it to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number and or project name in the subject line of your email. During the hearing, council members with questions should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of your participant panel or primary viewing window. Council members with questions will be announced in order as they raise their hands and the chair will recognize members to speak. Witnesses are requested to remain in the meeting until excused by the chair as council members may have questions. Finally, there will be pauses over the course of this meeting for various technical reasons, and we ask that you please be patient as we work through any issues. Chair Moya will now continue with today's agenda items. Uh, thank you, Arthur. <clears throat> I now open the public hearing on pre-considered LU items for the Broadway 11th Street rezoning proposal, seeking zoning map and zoning text amendments and relating to property in Council Member Van Bramer's district in Queens. As a reminder for anyone wishing to testify on this item, if you have not already done so, you must register online and you may do that now by visiting the council's website at www.council.nyc.gov uh, forward slash land use. Uh, council, can you please call uh, the first panel for this item? The applicant panel for this item will include Frank St. Jacques, land use counsel to the applicant. Uh, also available for a Q&A will be Steve Sinecori and Damian Smith. Council, if you could um, please administer the affirmation. Analysts, please raise your right hand and state your name for the record. Stephen Sinecori. Uh, Frank St. Jacques. Damian Smith. Thank you. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this subcommittee and in answer to all council member questions? Yes. 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 Thank you. Um, when you are uh, 
when you are ready to uh, uh, present your slideshow, please uh, say so, and it will be displayed on screen by our staff, and slides will be advanced for you when you say next. Uh, as a technical note for the benefit of the viewing public, if you need an accessible version of this uh, presentation, please send an email request to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Uh, now, uh, if you and your team may uh, begin, uh, I'll ask all the panelists as they first begin any remarks or in response to questions to so please introduce yourselves uh, by restating your names and organizations for the record. Uh, you may begin. Thank you, Chair Moya and subcommittee members. Um, I'm Frank St. Jock, an associate with Ackerman LLP. We're land use counsel for this project. Um, if you could please go ahead and, and live, uh, excuse me, load my slideshow presentation. Um, I'm also joined by Steve Sinicori from my office and Damian Smith of Ownership, uh, who will be available to answer questions uh, after the presentation. Next slide, please. We are here to present an application for a zoning map amendment to rezone underutilized property in Ravenswood on the south side of Broadway between 11th Street and 12th Street from the existing R5 zoning district to a special mixed use district or MX district that pairs an M14 manufacturing zoning district and an R7A residential zoning district. This application also seeks zoning text amendments to establish an MIH or mandatory inclusionary housing area with MIH option one and to establish this MX district within the zoning text. These actions will facilitate the development of a seven story mixed use, mixed use building with 199 units including 50 permanently income restricted units under MIH option one. Next slide, please. This portion of Ravenswood was zoned with an R5 residential district in 1961 that remains in place today despite the prevalence of industrial uses, which are shown on this land use map in purple. The R5 district is characterized by industrial warehouse and garage type buildings and pockets of low density older housing stock. In contrast, the area north of Broadway was rezoned in the 2010 Astoria rezoning, and there are several new eight story residential buildings on the north side of Broadway and the R7 district, which are shown with blue circles on this land use map. You can also see that there is very little local retail on the area. Next slide, please. And you can see that surrounding built context in this aerial view, which is looking at the uh, rezoning area uh, from the south, looking north. The project area is located on two wide streets, uh, Broadway and 11th Street, and is within the transit zone. North of the site along Broadway and the existing R7A C23 district, you can see those eight-story residential buildings. The lower density warehouse context to the south is shown on the bottom portion of this slide. The block west of the site across 11th Street was rezoned with an R7X C with a C13 overlay and a R6B district in 2019. Next slide, please. So this slide shows the existing R5 zoning district on the left with the site shaded in red. And the right shows the proposed M14 R7A MX district. The special mixed use district zoning designation was established back in 1997 to encourage investment in existing neighborhoods such as Ravenswood by allowing a balanced variety of uses, including light industrial uses consistent with the historic character of this area. The MX district allows for new medium density mixed use development that's consistent with the surrounding built context and zoning. Next slide, please. Here are details of the proposed development. Uh, these actions would facilitate a seven story mixed use building with 199 units, 50 of which would be permanently income restricted under MIH option one, and new job generating uses, including approximately uh, 28,686 square feet of commercial and light industrial uses. These include a grocery store, local retail, arts programming space, a wine distribu a distributor, and floral production studio. The proposed MX zoning district ensures that this range of uses is permitted in the project area. The breakdown of MIH units by income band and unit size is also shown on this slide. 
Uh, 17 units will be provided at 40% AMI, 17 at 60% AMI, and 16 units at 80% AMI. HANIC will be the project's MIH administering agent, and we also note that we have signed an agreement with 32BJ for prevailing wage building service worker jobs. Next slide, please. Here you can see the ground floor configuration of uses including the several non-residential uses, along with the residential lobbies and uh, access to parking. Next slide, please. The proposed development serves a need in the community, as there is currently very little local retail in the area. Uh, along Broadway, the, uh, this building will provide a grocery store and local retail, most likely uh, locally oriented uh, food and beverage use. And you can see that the corner of the building is chamfered at uh, 11th Street, as you can see on the right hand side of the screen. Next slide, please. And that chamfer, um, which you can see here on the left hand side of the screen, screen allows uh, an outdoor seating area for that local retail. Um, along 11th Street, uh, there will also be a floral production studio. Um, the florist Cambridge Floral Designs intends to relocate from Long Island City. And then finally, um, the wine distributor Ilbaco Wine, excuse me, Ilbaco Wine Merchant is planning to move its operations from Nassau County. Next slide, please. And finally, you can see the arts programming space at the corner of 12th Street and 33rd Avenue. And you can also see the building form and how the building steps down from seven stories along Broadway to six and five stories on the southern edge of the building. That concludes my presentation. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. And as I noted, Steve Sinecori from my office and Damian Smith from ownership are also available for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you for your testimony today. I just have one quick question. Uh, do you have a plan uh, in place to address uh, local hiring during uh, construction generally? And uh, how do you respond to some of the borough president's recommendations around jobs specifically? I know you mentioned the service workers, but uh, just in particular about local hires. Yes, um, the, the project team has actually been working with uh, Urban Upbound uh, to provide, to respond to the borough president's uh, requests for, for local hiring and MWBE hiring uh, as a component of the project. Uh, so we're happy to report that, that we're working with, with Urban Upbound on that. Great. Uh, that's it for me. Um, I now want to turn over uh, to my colleagues if they have any questions um, for this uh, panel. Chair, sure. Council Member Gordetschik has a uh, hand raised for, the question, for a question. Barry G, you're up. Um, if I could ask the applicant to go back to their presentation. And specifically the map of the area. I think that's probably slide three. It might have been. Yes. Okay. So um, my only question here is whether or not this building will um, affect Socrates Sculpture Park with with shadows. So that, that's a good question. And that was part of a, a thorough um, what we were required to, to perform uh, environmental analysis for this project. Uh, we determined that there would be uh, no no impact uh, from the project on Socrates Sculpture Park. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, thank you, Barry. If there's any other council members who have any questions uh, for this panel. No, Chair, I see no members, uh, other members with questions. Okay, there being uh, no further questions, uh, the applicant panel is excused. Uh, Council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on the Broadway 11th Street rezoning application? Yes, Chair, I believe that we do have one public witness who has signed up to speak. Uh, for members of the public, please note again that witnesses will generally be called in panels when necessary. If you are a member of the public signed up to testify on the Broadway 11th Street rezoning proposal, please stand by when you hear your name being called and prepare to speak when the Chair says that you may begin. 
please be reminded that once all panelists in your group have completed their testimony, you will be removed from the meeting as a group and the next group of speakers will be introduced. And once removed, participants may continue to view the live stream broadcast of this hearing at the council's website. We will now hear from the first panel, which will consist of Renzo Ramirez. Renzo Ramirez uh, to give testimony. Time starts now. Thank you. Just uh, as a reminder to members of the public, you will be given two minutes to speak. Uh, please do not begin until the Sergeant at Arms has started the clock. Uh, Renzo, you may begin. Time starts now. Can you guys hear me? We can, Renzo, whenever you're okay. ready. All right, cool. Thank you. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Chair Moya and members of the subcommittee. My name is Renzo Ramirez, and I am a member of 32BJ. I'm here on behalf of 32BJ SEIU and the more than 8,000 32BJ members to express our strong support for this project. The developers, the NK Construction and Pros Prosper Property Group have applied to build a seven story mixed use building that will include residential and commercial space. We are pleased to announce that the developers have made a credible commitment to provide prevailing wage jobs for the future building service workers at this site. We estimate that this rezoning will allow for the creation of five new property service jobs and 50 new affordable units. These jobs are typically filled by local members of the community and because of this commitment will pay family sustaining wages, which help bring working families into the middle class. The percentage of affordable apartments are needed for working people in Queens. This affordable housing and commitment to good prevailing wage jobs will give the opportunity for upward mobility, security and dignity to working class families. 32BJ supports responsible developers who invest in the communities where they build. We know that this development will continue to uphold the industry standard and provide opportunities for, for working families to thrive. Thank you. Thank you, Renzo. Thank you for uh, your testimony today. Uh, if uh, any council members have questions for this panel, uh, please uh, raise your hand. Chair, it appears there are no members with questions for this panel. Okay, there being uh, no more questions for this panel, the witness panel is excused. If there are any additional members of the public who wish to testify on the Broadway 11th Street rezoning proposal, please press the raise hand button now. Uh, the meeting will briefly stand at ease while we check for any newly registered members of the public. Chair Moya, there are uh, no other members of the public who wish to testify on this item. Okay, there being uh, no members of the public who wish to testify on the pre-considered LU items relating to the Broadway 11th Street rezoning proposal, the public hearing on these items is now closed and they are laid over. I now open the public hearing on LU numbers 875, 876, 877, 878, for the 130 St. Felix Street proposal, which seeks zoning map, zoning text amendments, as well as two zoning special permits uh, and relates to property in Majority Leader Cumbo's district in Brooklyn. Uh, I will remind the viewing public for anyone wishing to testify on this item, if you have not already done so, you must register uh, online and you may do that now by visiting the council's website at www.council.nyc.gov forward slash land use. Um, Council, if you could uh, please uh, call the first panel for this item. Oh, the I'm so sorry. Panel, 
The, do we have uh, the majority leader uh, uh, wishing to make an opening statement? I apologize if I skipped over that. Sure. I see that the majority leader does appear to be uh, in the meeting. Um, I'll recommend that if she does want to give a statement, uh, that please use the raise hand function. I've, I've unmuted myself. Can you hear me at this time? Yep, we can hear you. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. And thank you to Chair Moya for hosting this meeting. I'm on my way to a ribbon cutting in Fort Greene Park, but I certainly wanted to um, express my enthusiasm for this particular project at 130 St. Felix. This is my first opportunity to have a project that has affordable home ownership opportunities in our district. The majority of the projects that I have had the opportunity to approve have been rentals, uh, affordable housing rentals, but this project will give many deserving families an opportunity to have uh, an opportunity to own homes within uh, the Fort Greene community. And that's a rarity with such public access as the Atlantic Avenue train station, cultural institutions, right in the midst of the neighborhood, as well as having an opportunity to have local businesses, the greatest schools in the world right here in our district and for a family to be able to afford the opportunity to purchase something in the district which has been um, so out of reach for so many families this is really a great opportunity to do that i'm also extremely excited about the opportunity for the brooklyn music school an institution that is over 109 years old um, one of the oldest cultural institutions in Brooklyn, New York, and New York City for that matter, to have an opportunity to expand their particular facility to serve even more children who are deserving of a music and arts education. So this is really a win-win uh, for our community on so many levels, the ability to have affordable home ownership, the ability to have uh, local hiring within our community, and the ability for an anchor organization in our community to finally be able to expand its facility to service more children is certainly something that I'm proud to see um, as I close my tenure in the city council. Thank you so much. Thank you, Majority Leader Cumbo. Thank you for your uh, uh, opening statement. Uh, I now um, ask the council to please uh, call up uh, the first panel for this item. The applicant panel will include Brian Kelly, Stephanie Rhodes, Dan Kaplan, Melanie Myers, Shelby Green, and also available for mm -hmm. questions uh, and answers, David Court and Abby Rudo. Thank you. And Council, if you could please uh, administer the affirmation. Panelists, uh, please, in some semblance of an order, uh, state your name for the record and raise your right hand. Brian Kelly, oh. got the organization. Melanie Myers, Fried Frank. Stephanie Rhodes, Gotham Organization. Dan Kaplan, FX Collaborative Architects. Yep. Uh, do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this subcommittee and an answer to all council member questions? Yes. Uh, yeah. yes. yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, when you're ready to present your slideshow, uh, please say so, and it will be displayed on the screen by our staff. Slides will be advanced when you say next. Uh, once again, anyone who requires an accessible version of this presentation may send an email request to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Um, and also, I just want to quickly recognize that we've been joined by Council Member 11. Uh, and now, uh, Ms. Myers, if you and your team uh, uh, would like to begin, you can uh, begin now. Uh, with your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you could uh, uh, bring up the slides, that would be great. So thank you, Chair Moria and council members. Uh, thank you for having us. My name is Melanie Myers. I'm land use attorney with Fried Frank, Harris Shriver and Jacobson. They'd be attorney for the applicant. Um, next slide, please. 
The applications before you are for a series of land use approvals that will replace a long vacant site in downtown Brooklyn with a contextual residential and community facility building to be developed by the Gotham organization. The development will be located at 130 and 130 St. Felix Street within the BAM Historic District and will share a zoning lot with the existing Brooklyn Music School on its northeastern side and with a 512 foot tall one handsome condominium on its southwestern side. When complete, the project will include approximately 120 residential units of which 30% will provide a unique homeownership opportunity for low and moderate income households. And it will also include 20,000 square feet of expansion space for the Brooklyn Music School, a longstanding Brooklyn not-for-profit. I'm going to run through the requested land use actions. Then we'll turn it over first to Dan Kaplan, of FX Collaborative to discuss the proposed building in its context, then to Stephanie Rhodes of the Gotham Organization and Shelby Green of the Brooklyn Music School to discuss the project's affordable housing program and the goals for the Brooklyn Music School. Next slide, please. There, next slide, thank you. There are four land use actions. The first, we are seeking a zoning map amendment from the existing C61 zoning to a C66 and a C64 district. This amendment will appropriately place the southern half of the block into higher density zoning districts immediately adjacent to Brooklyn's largest transportation hub. It will also replace a zoning district that is inconsistent with the existing one Hanson building context with a zoning that brings the existing building into closer compliance. The zoning map amendment will allow for the remainder of the zoning lot, including the 130 St. Felix site, to be built to a transitional roughly 8 FAR scale. Second, we are seeking zoning text amendments to rezone the area as a mandatory inclusionary housing, MIH area, to modify the FAR permitted in C66 districts to the standard 12 FAR if the district is also zoned as an MIH area, and to modify an existing downtown Brooklyn special permit, allowing bulk modifications for developments on irregular sites to make it applicable in C64 and C66 zones. Next slide, please. Third, we are requesting a special permit pursuant to the revised uh, ZR 101-82 to modify heightened setback regulations uh, for the building. This modification will allow for the 130 St. Felix Street building to be moved away from the lower scale St. Felix Street and towards the Ashland Street above a low two and three story base. We are also seeking modifications of port and lot coverage requirements, and these modifications will allow us to address a party wall condition and the high lot coverage of the existing One Hanson building. Finally, the project is seeking a waiver under zoning resolution section 74533 to eliminate a requirement for 17 accessory parking spaces. This special permit will allow the lower floors of the project to be occupied by the Brooklyn Music School rather than parking, something that we think is appropriate in this high transit zone. Thank you for your time. I will now send it over, turn it over to Dan Kaplan. Good, Good morning, Chair Moya and council members and uh, Majority Le Leader Combo. Uh, next slide, please. And the slide, actually next two slides. I will walk through the, uh, yes, thank you. Um, uh, the design uh, aspects of the project. The development site shown here in red is in a very interesting location in the BAM Historic District, immediately adjacent to the landmark One Hanson uh, Place Tower and uh, across the street from the uh, uh, Flatbush Corridor and as was noted earlier, uh, steps away from the um, transit hub. Next slide, please. Uh, the whole idea behind our massing was to create a transition from the Flatbush Corridor to the Fort Greene and BAM Historic Districts um, and also be respectful to the One Hanson Place landmark. Therefore, we have um, lowered the building below the main, what we call the shoulder of, of the tower. It has a tapering form that defers to the tower and it covers a uh, lot line wall that's less ornamented. It also responds to the um, 
St. Felix Street scale by creating a 40 foot high street wall and then a 40 foot high, a wall, deep setback in two tiers, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, it is worth noting that this project received um, approval as appropriate from uh, the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Next slide, please. Uh, which you'll see a rendering of the project from uh, going from bottom to top, uh, just immediately uh, right of the of the church, the Handsome Place Church. You can see the low street wall and the two steps up and then the tapering form and then the building setting back uh, up below the main shoulder of, of one Handsome Place. We also look very carefully at the um, architecture and facade of the Art Deco Tower and have reinterpreted that in a modern way and really looked at the brick colors very carefully so everything harmonizes. Next slide, please. I'll now give you a tour around the building, starting with um, Fulton Street uh, looking north with one Hanson in the middle of the slide and our uh, proposed tower or building stepping to the right down uh, to uh, St. Felix Street. Next slide, please, which is 4th Avenue. Uh, and you can see a little sliver of the building just to the left of one Hanson place. It's really deferential to it and uh, will not compete with it. Next slide, please. Ashland uh, look and Fulton looking south, uh, the BAM cornice in, in, in the midground, and then our building pushed up against the existing lot line building one Hansen and its setbacks harmonizing with the setbacks of one Hansen and also the tower or the building being lower than the tower of St. Felix and that piece of mechanical equipment there is actually on the um, St. Felix Street, uh, the one Hansen uh, place building. Next slide. Uh, which is from uh, uh, Hanson Place. And you can see how the, the, the stepping and tiering of the building steps away from the historic district and is deferential to uh, the one Hanson Place landmark. Next slide, please. St. Felix Street uh, frontage, uh, the music school is on the right uh, in those stucco buildings that, that are arrayed. And then our building is just immediately to the left of that broken down into two portions. The, the portion immediately to the left of, of the music school is the entrance. And then the building steps forward and is, is really the, the, the music school's uh, main, main portion with an entrance to the residential in the far, far of the screen. You can see here the, the setbacks from St. Felix Street that really should uh, expose, keep exposed the north side of the church and really push um, the majority of, of the proposed building away from the scale of St. Felix Street. Next slide. On Ashland Place, uh, the building also sets back. It has uh, uh, materials that, that harmonize with One Hands in Place's base. Uh, Brooklyn Music School has a presence on, uh, on Ashland right next to um, Bam Fisher and um, the rest of the, the cultural core. Next slide, please. Uh, um, it, this will be a sustainable building. Um, the, uh, it will have um, deal with storm water in a, in a very responsible way with cisterns and green roofs. It'll have a very uh, um, energy efficient facade that's uh, not all glass. It has a lot of opaque surfaces for highly, insulation, highly insulated and have healthy materials for all residents. Next slide. Finally, um, a couple more slides uh, before I turn it over. This is on the left is a section or a cut through the building. And in blue, you can see Brooklyn Music School on, on three floors with a, its main, uh, with high floor to floor heights. Um, the main entrance off of uh, uh, St. Felix Street and on the, the uh, entire second floor and a portion of, the, uh, of it below grade. Uh, above that is the residential building. On the right is the plan of um, the ground floor. St. Felix Street is on the on the right. The Brooklyn Music School is shown in blue, immediately adjacent to the existing music school, so it, it can uh, uh, be connected seamlessly with it. The residential is shown as yellow, and on the left side, which is the uh, Ashland Place, is the loading for the the condominium, the 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 one handsome place condominium tower, as well as the service entrance to the residential building. So deliveries and trash will be on Ashland Place and not on the smaller scale St. Felix Street. Next slide. 
Uh, Sh Shelby will talk about this more in, in a moment, uh, but I just wanted to highlight some of the architectural aspects of the of the music school expansion. 20,000 square feet, high floor to floor heights. Um, BMS will be able to double their, their uh, instructional space um, and critically will allow a place for the school to continue to function on site while the rest of the uh, existing buildings are being renovated and really preserves uh, affordable music education at this location, which uh, was referenced earlier has been for over a century. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to Stephanie Rhodes. Next slide. Actually, we have a um, we have a couple of slides for Shelby Green. Oh, I'm sorry. That, I'm sorry, Shelby. Brooklyn Music School. I'll turn it over to Shelby Green. <laughs> Shelby, you're on mute. Thank you. <laughs> Again, I'm Shelby Green, a chair of the Board of Trustees of the Brooklyn Music School, BMS. This mixed use, mixed income project, the future home of the Brooklyn Music School Community Arts Center, promises to play an integral role in so many city objectives and policies. The first has to do with BMS's place in and service to the community. A new building will enable BMS to continue its storied place as an anchor in the community, a place where the young and old come to share ideas and to be inspired. BMS began not long after the emergence of the shanty towns in Fort Greene. In the early 1900s, BMS offered music lessons in not so pretty places, wherever it could find space, like the Navy Yard, a midship building, and to the poor and struggling for 30 cents a lesson. This project will place BMS solidly in the 21st century. It will mean doubling the performance and instructional space. It will house a state of the arts facility for music recording and play and provide a space for training kids in music production. It will be accessible to persons of all abilities. It will be a venue for other arts programs in the community. The BMS founding principle is that music and arts instruction should be available to all irrespective of means or background. Our adherence to this principle is revealed in the diverse demographics among students and leadership. More than 60% of students come from communities of color and most receive some sort of financial aid. Starting with me, more than half of the Board of Trustees and staff are diverse by ethnicity and gender. BMS offers music and arts instruction across all genres, from African drumming to hip hop to opera. The after school pro and summer programs keep students, kids engaged outside the classroom. The outreach program brings music to public schools and senior centers throughout the city. It is well known that musical training improves cognitive abilities in ways that service all in all of our life's endeavors. But the existing facility, four 100 year old row houses cobbled together, was not designed for music instruction. The buildings not only constrain use, but also the capacity for creativity. They are nearing the end of their lives and it takes tremendous resources to maintain them. They lack both modern infrastructure and energy efficient systems now known to be important for our physical and environmental health. The second reason for approving this project has to do with access to the Fort Greene community. BMS and the prospective residents of the new building will own their spaces. This ownership will go a long way to achieving a measure of social equity. While Fort Greene with its mix of cultures and lifestyles is now viewed as a desirable place to live and discover, it was not always that way and continues to suffer from the lingering impacts of exclusionary government and private land use practices over time. From the disinvestment of redlining against once thriving enclaves of black craftsmen to being the target of the plans of Robert Moses at community re revitalization, code for removing the poor and ethnic minorities. Now Fort Greene faces the challenge of rising housing prices that may raise new concerning demographic, demographic changes. As an example, in the last decade, the median home price in Fort Greene rose by over 100%. Keeping music and housing available and affordable are key tools for keeping the community open and inclusive. This well-planned and thoughtfully designed project will act as a strong bulwark against the loss of diversity uh, and vibrancy in the community. Thanks. 
now I'll turn it over to Stephanie. Good morning. Um, if you could please advance um, a couple more slides. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, 130 St. Felix aims to remove barriers to affordable home ownership in a high cost area. Longtime residents of this neighborhood find it increasingly difficult, if not impossible, to afford to stay. Uh, given the drastic growth in home prices, uh, which you heard Shelby speak to from around uh, $400,000 10 years ago to close to $1 million today, purchasing a home remains out of reach for most families. Next slide. So our proposal sets aside 30% of the homes as income targeted for families earning low to moderate income. Um, these will be for sale homes, creating an opportunity for affordable home ownership. And we will work with the local not-for-profit Impact Brooklyn as the administrative and marketing agent and to assist with community outreach. Next slide. So income targeted home ownership addresses a significant existing gap in economic opportunity and access to quality housing. Uh, the homes at 130 St. Felix will be reserved for families at 70%, 90%, and 100% of area median income, so low to moderate income. Um, this is an average of 93% area median income. Uh, this is below the maximum allowable average AMI uh, under MIH option four. Represented here towards the bottom of the slide are several examples of households that would fall within that income range. Uh, additionally, our unit mix prioritizes larger family size units um, with the majority of the homes being one bedroom or larger and a significant number of those homes being two and three bedrooms. Next slide. So using today's area median income figures, this chart represents household incomes that would qualify at 70, 90, and 100% AMI. Um, to note the median household income for this area is around $114,000. Next slide. Um, as you heard from the majority leader, creating affordable home ownership opportunities as opposed to rental is unique for the area and almost unprecedented in a landmark district where there are greater barriers to home ownership. Um, families are able to build generational wealth that would otherwise be unavailable to them um, and do not have to relocate further outside of the city in order to uh, be able to afford to own a home, uh, avoiding displacement and advancing economic equality. Next slide. Uh, additionally, we plan to work with Team Brown Consulting to maximize local and MWBE employment opportunities. Um, we'll provide Team Brown with a procurement schedule and they'll reach out to the community to advance, uh, to announce openings and to gather a list of respondents for our construction manager. And we'll all work together to track placement progress and help ensure these goals are either met or exceeded. Next slide. So in summary, uh, this is a truly unique proposal to bring income targeted home ownership along with community facility space to be owned by Brooklyn Music School, creating a lifeline for a cherished arts and cultural institution with a longstanding presence in the community. Additionally, we are committed to advancing employment opportunities, meeting local and MWBE hiring goals and providing well-paying 32 BJ building service jobs. Our design will be sustainable and energy efficient and is contextual to its surroundings in the neighborhood. This will transform an empty, unused parking lot into a multitude of benefits for the community. Thank you. If you go to the next slide, it'll say thank you. And that's the end of our presentation. Thanks for the opportunity to speak today. Thank you so much. Um, just a couple of questions here. Um, you were just talking about uh, the uh, uh, housing units. Uh, what are the proposed prices for the affordable home ownership units? And uh, how do these prices compare to market rate? So I can take that. Uh, they're at a significant discount to market rate, uh, about 60% on average uh, based on 2020 sales data for the area. 
Um, the prices are calculated such that families will pay no less than 25 and no more than 35% of their gross income towards their housing costs. So that's mortgage and common area charges. Um, I can yeah. speak to yeah. specific pricing if. Yeah, if you could. <laughs> I thought that's where you were going, yeah. yes. Um, okay, so uh, it, it obviously varies by AMI level, but as an example, 70% uh, AMI one bedroom would be priced at 59,693. Oh, that's the required income. The home price is AMI, and that comes down to a total monthly payment of uh, $1,741 a month at 35%. Could you repeat income. that? You kind of like froze for a minute, so I kind of lost you right there. Sure. I lost my screen as well. Um, can you hear me now? Yep. Sure. Okay. I said, as an example, at 70% of area median income, a one-bedroom unit would be priced at $246,000, uh, which is a monthly payment of uh, $1,741 a month. Okay. Um, and then for the... Uh, MIH home ownership units, if a homeowner wants to move, uh, how does that unit remain affordable for the next buyer? Uh, so the unit would be restricted to that same area median income. So uh, the next family looking to purchase would need to qualify at the same income level. Got it. And will the affordable home ownership residents have equal access to the uh, building uh, amenities? Yes, equal access to all amenities and same entrance and lobby. Great. Um, okay, those are uh, all the questions that I have uh, for the panel. Um, Arthur, do we have any uh, council members that wish to ask the panel any questions? I have uh, questions. Council members with questions should use. Uh, yes. There we go. Uh, let me turn this over now to uh, Majority Leader Cumbo for some questions. Thank you so much. Um, much of what was um, discussed uh, during the presentation answered many of my questions. I want to reiterate that um, the partnership with Team Brown Consulting is very important. Um, we want to make sure that local hiring is happening in our community. And so I'm very pleased that you all have already created an arrangement with Ed Brown Consulting, but I want what I want to get ahead of is I want to make sure and to ensure that Team Brown Consulting is brought in in the very infancy stages of the project. So I certainly want to make sure that um, their leadership and their experience of hiring in the community is brought in at a very for uh, this particular project. I also wanted to ask, because so many projects um, that we do have been rentals, how did you all come to decide to do a affordable housing home ownership program? Council member combo, it's Brian Kelly from Gotham. We, we found that the barriers to entry for home ownership in this case could be resolved by cross subsidy by the market rate homes to fulfill that gap or need. And our firm really specializing in mixed income housing development um, and have done it many times in the past successfully found this, that this could be one of a kind or the first of a kind to create affordable home ownership in this location of Brooklyn. So we identified the need and found that we could cross subsidize creating that affordable home ownership with the market rate homes within the same building. Um, so I think we're pioneering, but we've shown success on our track record of building, for example, the, the largest 50, 30, 20 in New York City at Gotham West is an example of being successful pioneers to create diverse incomes within a building or a community. That's incredible. I mean, we definitely want to see more home ownership opportunities, which is why this particular project is so critical and important um, in our district. Can you tell me a little bit more about the role that Impact Brooklyn will play um, and the marketing and the outreach efforts. Stephanie, you wanna handle that? Sure, yeah, I can take that question. Um, so we're going to work with IMPACT uh, from the early stages of the project uh, to conduct information sessions, to coordinate uh, local advertising, to raise awareness. 
um, they'll conduct uh, seminars, financial literacy courses, um, and they'll help direct people on how to apply, what the application process looks like, um, as well as guiding them through the, the and move-in process. Um, this would include working with them to obtain their um, any kind of down payment assistance program and um, financing for the home. That's fantastic. I mean, one of the things that we want to make sure that happens in this is that people are properly notified but given ample opportunity to prepare um, their applications for whatever will be needed um, in this regard. So it's important that we make sure that the outreach is solid and that it's strong, but that it also prepares um, potential home buyers for what they will need to do in order to be qualified for this. Council, uh, council member, we take it very seriously and are committed to start early and often in the education process and then to ensure that the community board preference in addition is fully met. We want to make sure that it's oversubscribed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any uh, other questions. Your presentation was, um, was really very thorough. Um, I guess the only thing that I would close out with, which you spoke about in terms of the design um, complementing the historical district, but what were some of the things that you did um, or the recommendations or the changes that you made uh, by LPC's approval? What were some of the things that they wanted to see that you took into consideration in order to deliver this project? Uh, th thank you. It's Dan Kaplan of FX Collaborative Architects. Um, we first um, proposed a building uh, that to, to the commission that was uh, taller and that was pushed closer to um, St. Felix Street and pulled away from, from Ashland. And um, the commission uh, unanimously directed us to uh, uh, push the building closer to Ashland and further away from St. Felix, which we did. So we remassed the building. We also lowered the building so that it's substantially lower than the, the shoulder. The second thing is, is we came in with a design that had a, um, called it an ombre design that faded from the darker brick of the one Hanson church to the lighter brick of the of the uh, tower, uh, the, from the church to the tower. And while the commission appreciated and liked it, liked it they asked us to tone it down, which we have. And um, between that and the careful detailing of the building along uh, St. Felix Street, we were able to get uh, approval from the, the commission. And, uh, you know, we will continue to make sure that the building is delivered with uh, uh, the care that the um, the commission and the and the uh, and the uh, historic district uh, uh, demand. Well, those are all my questions. Um, I thank you so much and I look forward to my colleagues support mm -hmm. on this project and um, I hope that my colleagues will vote in support of it. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, uh, Majority Leader Cumbo. Uh, I now uh, turn it over to our council to see if there's any other council members that have any questions for this panel. Uh, no chair, I see no other members with questions for the panel. Great, um, there being no further question, the applicant uh, panel is excused. Uh, council, are there any members Thank of the you. public who wish to testify on the 130 St. Felix Street uh, application? Yes, Chair. We have approximately 23 public witnesses who have signed up to speak. For members of the public here to testify, please note again that witnesses will generally be called in panels of up to four names at a time. If you are a member of the public signed up to testify on the 130 St. Felix Street proposal, please stand by when you hear your name being called and prepare to speak when the Chair says that you may begin. Please note again, once all panelists in your group have completed their testimony, you will be removed from the meeting as a group and the next group of speakers will be introduced. Once removed, participants may continue to view the, view the live stream broadcast of this meeting at the council website. We will now hear from the first panel, which will include Lucy Cotine, Julia Bryant, John Dew, 
and Sandy Ryburn. And the first speaker on this panel will be Lucy Coteen, followed by Julia Bryant. And just a quick reminder to members of the public, you will be given two minutes to speak. Uh, please do not begin until the Sergeant at Arms has uh, started the clock. You may begin. Time starts now. Uh, hello, uh, this is Lucy Coteen. I want to say I am opposed to the rezoning and dismantling of the 1978 landmark BAM Historic District designated to protect its unique historic legacy for future generations. The New York City Landmarks Preservation Commission is being sued in court now because they have failed in their role to protect it. The outcome of this lawsuit should conclude before proceeding with Euler. This building represents the dissemblance of the BAM Historic District. The issue here is the intrusion into a historic district with an out of scale and non-compliant design of a building. We see the creeping invasion of our historic districts all over the city, approved by the Landmarks Commission for development that does not meet the criteria in the historic district. St. Felix Street is a narrow street with one side composed of three and four story residential buildings and the other side composed of the historic Brooklyn Academy of Music building about 60 feet high and the historic United Methodist Church and the low rise buildings of the Brooklyn Music School, which are converted townhouses. The new building would line up against the historic and iconic One Hanson Place building and block out the light of those living in One Hanson Place. To be aware that the block of St. Felix Street experienced a cave-in in 1917 and 1997, and no environmental examination has taken place as to the impact that constructing this building will have on the infrastructure of the street. Concurrent with the proposed construction, uh, there is this massive development by Alloy across, directly across the street. There is no comprehensive evaluation of the impact of all the construction going on simultaneously in the area. Those who support the zoning will talk endlessly about the affordable housing and the attributes of the Brooklyn Music School. All of this is irrelevant to the issue. We have seen this play out again and again. It is purposely by design to be divisive and destructive to a neighborhood and to the community. Time expired. This, this is not generous generosity, it is exploitation. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you for your testimony today. Julia Bryant will be the next speaker, followed by John Dew. Julia Bryant. Time starts now. My name is Julia Bryant, and I'm a longtime member of this community. I'm also a member of the Movement to Protect the People. I oppose the 130 Street, um, St. Felix Street development. Um, our BAM historic district was intended to protect the mid 19th century um, neighborhood character. I also would like to note that there is no binding community benefit. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Thank you for your testimony today. John Dew will be the next speaker, followed by Sandy Ryburn. John Dew. Time starts now. Can you hear me? Yes. I don't know if you can hear John. me. We can hear you, John, whenever you're ready. Okay, good, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, first, I need to acknowledge uh, greetings to Council Moyer and my two council members, Majority Leader Combo and Steve Levin, who I know very closely from work in the community board. My name is John Dew and I'm a member of community board too for close to a quarter century. And I spent four years as chair of community board too and two terms as chair of the public and transportation, uh, tran uh, transportation and public safety committee. And I am currently co-chair of the Myrtle Avenue business improvement district. And I've divided my testimony into two very quick bullet points. In 2004, the downtown Brooklyn community was upzoned and gentrified. Practically the entire community of color was removed 
using building condemnation and imminent, imminent domain. None of the promised community benefits agreed to by the city have been realized. They included ADA, ADA access to the subways, which is a federal requirement, underground parking for the government agency employee vehicles that currently park on the sidewalks, a public restroom. The proposed public park has been privatized and greatly reduced in size and remains unbuilt for 19 years. Once eventually built, it will get 15 minutes of direct sunlight as a result of being surrounded by Euler high-rise build, high buildings. The city also agreed to limit high-rise buildings to the downtown area only. The proposed building is in Fort Greene Historic District. Bullet point number two, 130 St. Felix is on an extremely narrow block in a historic fire. district of Fort Greene. The historic Williams Bank building, the entire block collapsed two decades ago. In addition to the street, the stoops and facades on every house on the east side of the block had to be restored by the city over years and the block was totally off limits to the public. The sidewalk on the east side of the block is three feet wide. There's parking on only yeah. one side of the block yeah. and the developer yeah. did not mention any no, I of need, this. I need to wrap it up. Then we, we have to wrap it up. The, the I, I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping it up. Okay. <laughs> when asked about the shadows that would result from the 23 story adjacent building, the response was none. The shadows of the thank other you. taller thank buildings. You, thank you for your testimony today. We appreciate it uh, very much. Uh, Council, if you could uh, please call the next panel. Sandy Sandy Ryburn will be the last speaker on this panel. Sandy Ryburn. Time starts now. Uh, hello. Um, if you can hear me, I don't see me, but anyway, uh, good morning. Yeah, Sandy. Yeah. I'm uh, Sandy Rayburn, uh, and I'm in total opposition to the 130 St. Felix rezoning. Here's what I want to be put on the city council record, as well as a paper trail of council members, council member Cumbo's legacy as one more likely rezoning giveaway to the detriment of her constituents. This mega 23 story skyscraper project is being built as has been said on a fragile street. And I'd like you to look at my written testimony for the pictures of the uh, uh, the uh, uh, street collapses, but two of them. Please also read the dozens of community members who have sent in their testimony in opposition. The developer Gotham was fined at a construction site in Williamsburg where a malfeasance occurred and a worker was killed in June of this year. Are they who you really want to reward? Are they the right developers to be trusted building on a 19th century street? on top of the MTA Barclays underpinnings, really? And let's focus on what was a predominantly black community, Fort Greene. The shocking recent 2020 census data shows affluent white residents moving in and pushing out lower income people of color. The tsunami began, as John Dew said, in the 2004 broken promises of the rezoning of downtown Brooklyn. This baloney affordable condo project is more Kool-Aid sanctimony being served up exactly the way that BFC's developed Bedford Union Armory reneged on all the so-called public good it was going to do. And council member Cumbo abetted it, period, no matter that the community was fiercely against it. Where are the binding community benefits? Nowhere to be found. The time is overdue to say no to this sham and frankly, to put a moratorium on all city upzonings time and expired. bait and switch MIH projects until we get a council that speaks for their constituents and not their bosses, Redney. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you for your testimony today. Uh, council, if we can please call up the next panelist. The, that was the last, that was the last speaker on this panel, uh, Chair Moya. If there are no questions, I can announce the next panel. The next panel of speakers will include Tina Fleming, 
Max Searcy, Renzo Ramirez, and Cynthia McKnight. Her speaker will be Tina Fleming, followed by Max Searcy. Time starts now. Okay, good morning. Can everyone hear me? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Okay, good morning, majority legal combo. Good morning, members of the city council. My name is Tina Fleming and I'm a lifelong resident and longtime activist of this community. I'm speaking today in support of the Brooklyn Music School 130 St. Philly Street Project for the following reason. For years while I volunteered with my local PTA, I worked to ensure that public school students had access to STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts and math programs from elementary school age. Exposing young students to specialty programming that falls outside of the standard curriculum is so essential because it allows students to prepare to apply for specialty public, middle, and high schools. All too often, however, we see that students from higher income families are exposed through their school's extracurricular activities to engage in STEM opportunities, while students from lower income families are not afforded these same opportunities. As a result, students from lower income families are often unprepared to compete for spots in specialty middle and high schools. In this text, it's so important while the Brooklyn Music School focuses on using scholarships to provide accessible music education to students from all economic backgrounds so essential. The Brooklyn Music School diverse student body must be given access to sufficient space and facilities. And in order to meet that goal, the school's facilities must be expanded. Furthermore, I know far too many educators who teach in Brooklyn who are unable to afford homes in the city and thus face long commutes every day. The approach that 130 St. Phyllis takes settings aside the portion of its residential units for purchase at below market rates is rare for those for more moderate means to achieve home ownership in Fort Greene. If our teachers cannot afford to live in the very communities they serve, prompt action must be taken. The 130 St. Felix is a real opportunity for action that is setting right in front of us. This is for the reason why I, I urge you to- Time expired. The 120, the 130 Felix Street project. Thank you. I got it all in in two minutes. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. Okay. Thank you, Tina. Thank you for your testimony today. Max Searcy will be the next speaker. Max Searcy, followed by Renzo Ramirez. Time starts now. Hello, members of the New York City Council. My name is Max Searcy, and I am here today to speak on behalf of Terry Grease, the co-founder, producer, and director of Irondale. My name is Terry Grease, and I am here to speak in favor of the Brooklyn Music School's enhancement of its facilities as part of the development at 130 Street, St. Felix. I cannot stress enough the importance of this project. Every community has its own character and density, but the quality of arts in downtown Brooklyn and Fort Greene is unlike any place else in the world. It is one of the reasons people want to live here and it is one of the reasons the neighborhood exists as a stable mix of new residents and those who have lived here for many years. For over a hundred years, the Brooklyn Music School has been a touchstone in creating the character of the neighborhood and now the neighborhood must support this expansion. My theater, Irondale, like BMS, has created spaces, virtual and physical, that allow for artistic expression of all forms and push the boundaries of artistic expression. BMS offers a space for our youth where they can feel free and comfortable to express themselves while bringing them closer to the community. And over the past year and a half, the importance of such organizations has been self-evident. For families throughout Brooklyn and now well beyond, thanks to its creative virtual learning programs, BMS's expansion will allow it to diversify its programs and partnerships and to continue to provide its services to people of all ages and backgrounds, creating new generations of citizen artists throughout our community. I and all the actors and staff at Irondale support this plan to continue artistic expression throughout the Brooklyn community, aiding our city and community's recovery. Sincerely, Terry Grease, Executive Director and Co-Founder of Irondale Ensemble Project at 85 South Oxford. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Thank you for your testimony. Renzo Ramirez will be the next speaker, followed by Cynthia McKnight. Uh, Chair, I see that Majority Leader Cumbo has a hand raised for a question. Yeah. 
Let me turn it over to Majority Leader Combo for a question. Uh, good afternoon. I just want to, I have a, a ribbon cutting at Fort Greene Park that I have to be in. So I, I just wanted to conclude. I've heard uh, much of the testimony. I'm hoping that I can hear the rest. I just wanted to respond to that with, with many of the developments that have happened that I've been able to approve. I'm hearing a lot of what people don't want um, and what they don't want to see but I'm not seeing any conclusive plans of what people do want to see. The fact of the matter is we have to create affordable housing opportunities for people in our community. We can't look at communities like Fort Greene and Clinton Hill and say, hands off. This is a beautiful community. We don't wish for anyone else to have the ability to live here. Um, that's unfortunate that so many people see having an opportunity for many young and upcoming families to have an opportunity to experience what so many people who have lived in this community for decades have had an opportunity to enjoy. It's critical that we continue to open our community to make sure that many people, up and coming people, people of different race, racial backgrounds and cultures can live in this community and benefit from the cultural anemones, the local businesses, the creative sector, the transportation opportunities. This is a game changer for families that are able to live here. It's critical that we create those opportunities for those who are moving to the community. The Gotham Company is well established at being able to do environmental reviews to make sure that this particular construction project is safe um, for this community and that we do not have an imploding of our streets. They have the expertise. They have built projects far larger and more complicated than this one. And the opportunity for the Brooklyn Music School, you know, we have to come to the realization that culture is the economic engine of this city. It is the very fiber of what makes New York City what it is today. And to continuously um, limit its ability to be able to grow and thrive in this city is a missed opportunity and it's unfortunate. And I would say that there are many projects such as the, the Hanson Place Seventh-day Adventist Project, which is producing 100 units of affordable housing. Same individuals against that project. The development and, and the restructuring and the revitalization of Fort Greene Park. Another project against it, 840 Atlantic Avenue, where we're producing 50 units of affordable housing at the 40 AMI level against it. I mean, at a certain point, we have to recognize we have to provide housing for people. And so I'm just going to conclude with that. You know, when we talk about the BAM cultural district and how uh, how sacred it is, we have to remember that Harvey Lichtenstein, um, who was the key elevator of the BAM Cultural District had a vision to utilize the BAM parking lots for culture and housing and mixed used opportunities for this neighborhood. And it has been utilized for that purposes. When we see BAM South and BAM North, they're being utilized to have a vacant lot in the middle of the community with no usage for it is a waste in our community when we have an affordable housing shortage. And I will just end with that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Malik, uh, Majority Leader Cumbo. Um, I just quickly want to make a quick announcement. I'm sorry, uh, I have to uh, attend a uh, bill signing for one of my bills that uh, has just passed, and I am now going to be turning uh, this over for the remaining part of this hearing uh, to Council Member Gradenchek um, to chair the uh, subcommittee meeting. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, let me turn it over to uh, Council Member Gradenchek. Renzo Ramirez will continue uh, on this panel, who will be followed by Cynthia McKnight. Time starts now. Can you guys hear me? Yes. All right. Yes, go ahead. Good morning, Chair Moya and members of the subcommittee. My name is Renzo Ramirez, and I am a member of 32BJ. I am here on behalf of 32BJ SEIU and the more than 3,500 32BJ members who live and work in the community district two to express our strong support for this project. The Gotham organization has made a credible commitment to providing prevailing wage jobs to the future building service workers at this site. We estimate that this rezoning will allow for the creation of many new property service jobs. These jobs are typically filled by local members of the community and because of this commitment, will pay family sustaining wages, which 
help bring working families into the middle class. The Gotham organization's partnership with the Brooklyn Music School will also sustain this important institution for years to come. The Gotham organization has a track record of creating good jobs throughout their portfolio and longtime partnership with 32BJ. As our members serve on the front lines of this pandemic, Gotham has continued to act as a responsible employer and has put the needs of their essential work workforce first. We respectfully urge you to approve this project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Renzo. The Cynthia McKnight will be the last speaker of this panel. Cynthia McKnight. Time starts now. Good morning. I'm the president and Brooklyn Borough President appointee for Community Education Council 13. District 13 goal is to be an anti-racist district and decrease the equity issues in our black and brown schools. I am also a union leader with AFG Local 913 of the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, an agency that was instrumental in enacting laws and policies that prevented black and brown people from receiving loans and owning affordable homes, such as those built in Levittown, New York. HUD is the agency that created the manual for redlining, which private lenders later adopted. The condo project at St. Felix will provide an opportunity for families to own a home, and this is why I'm so passionate about getting this project approved. CEC 13 looks forward to working with the nonprofit Impact, who is working on this St. Felix project by notifying our families about this opportunity for families to acquire generational wealth. I was a PTA president of PS11 in the Dock Street School in District 13, where we had the opportunity to partner with the Brooklyn Music School. I title one schools cannot afford music programs, and we look forward to the expansion of the Brooklyn Music School through this project to help our District 13 schools secure music programs. More than ever, our children and families are still facing a pandemic. We need our art programs to educate and heal. Although the real estate prices have gone up, we still have many low and middle income families in District 13 including Bedstein, Clinton Hill, Fort Greene, Prospect Heights communities. I plead that you approve this project to allow our families to own one of the affordable condos. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Ms. McKnight. Thank you for your testimony this morning. That was the last speaker on this panel. Are there any questions from any of the council members for the panel? Uh, no chair, I see no members with questions for this panel. Thank you, Council. The next panel will include Ernest Augustus. Ernest Augustus will be the uh, next speaker. Time starts now. Is Mr. Augustus with us? I understand he is uh, being brought into the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Council. There he is. Time starts now. Mr. Augustus, are you with us? I don't think that was Mr. Augustus. <laughs> Mr. Augustus, if you can hear me uh, and you are on a phone, can you press star nine, please? Star nine. Uh, Chair, we seem to be having some yeah. technical Why don't we come back to Mr. We'll come back. All right. If you could introduce the next panel. The next panel, and we will come back to Ernest Augustus uh, uh, later. We'll try to get you later, Mr. Augustus. The next panel will include Brian Adamchik, Barry Conyers, Blair Green, and Frank Cobalt. Brian Adamchik will be the first speaker. Uh, and 
please forgive me for mispronouncing and followed by Barry Conyers. Time starts now. Go ahead, Mr. Adamczyk. Okay, hello, good morning, uh, Council. Um, thank you all very much for allowing me to voice my thoughts in support of the 130 St. Felix Street project. My name is Brian Adamczyk and I'm the Interim Executive Director at the Brooklyn Music School. Prior to stepping into this role, I served as the Director of Programming and Productions at BMS. Between these various roles, which has involved a heavy emphasis on implementing the music and dance programming BMS offers, as well as overseeing the entire building usage of the theater, I believe I have an intimate understanding of our current resources and facility statuses. As you may or may not know, the Brooklyn Music School is a 112-year-old organization with a core mission of providing access to music and dance programming for anybody who wishes to receive it. Private lessons, ensembles, group classes, music therapy, Early childhood music performance opportunities and many other forms of the performing arts are offered to a diverse, wide ranging population of individuals from infants all the way to senior citizens and everything in between. BMS is truly a historic and cultural hub in the community, and it is a place where everyone is welcome to celebrate, bond, and gather through the arts. Over the long history of the Brooklyn Music School, the programming staff and faculty have all functioned under one roof, that being 126 St. Louis. Our current building is charming and unique, yet tired and full of dated materials. It, BMS is to grow, reach more people, and continue to serve its mission of creating widespread access. The idea of having not only more space, but a new cutting edge facility is incredibly exciting to us. The impact would undoubtedly be extended past its capability at the moment. From a programmatic standpoint, it would foster all existing programming and create a larger scale at which our various offerings could be housed and executed. Another facet that this potential expansion could help with is uh, in curricular areas such as music production, digital composition, mixing, and recording. These more contemporary types of programming ideally require proper equipment, space, and gear that truly uh, allow it to thrive. The addition, uh, additional BMS space within 130 books can certainly provide this. Thank you very much. We're very excited about this opportunity. Thank you for your testimony. Barry Conyers will be the next speaker who will be followed by Blair Green. Time starts now. I don't see Mr. Conyers. Oh boy. I think Mr. Augustus made it to us though. At least we'll, for a second. Next, we'll hear from Blair Green next and come back to Barry Conyers. Blair Green. Time starts now. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Blair Green and I'm um, on behalf of the Brooklyn Music School Project for 130 St. Felix Street. My testimony is gonna be on behalf of someone who spent more than half of their life here as a student and as somebody who's worked in this building. So I studied classical music here for about 15 years. And during that time, I got an opportunity to live out my dream and perform in the BMS theater, places all around the city, um, even in Belgium as a foreign exchange program that we had. So I feel that this is going to be an important project because it helps people like me who want to live out a dream, like have even more of an opportunity because I think that such a place that's so charming um, needs to be expanded. And for a diverse place like Brooklyn, we need like more resources to give to uh, the community. And for kids who want to live out a dream and learn instruments, sing, dance, act, or anything in the arts. So I feel that this is an important project and I look forward to it being uh, being a reality. So thank you. Thank That's you, sir. Testimony. Thank you for your testimony. Frank Cobalt will be the next and last speaker on this panel. Frank Cobalt. Time starts now.
Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak in support of the 130 St. Felix Street project. My name is Frank Cobalt and I have been the finance manager here for over a year. We're really excited about this opportunity to be in a brand new building next door. The school here encompasses more than 100 years of providing quality musical instruction to students of all backgrounds and skill levels in the community. The opportunity to move into a newly designed and constructed edifice uh, gives us opportunities from a technical and musical standpoint. Our building at 126 is old and has served its purpose well, but now is showing its age. We constantly are distracted by aging boilers, leaks in the walls and ceiling, antiquated wiring, failing plumbing, and falling roof tiles. Climate control in this three adjoined brownstones is nearly impossible. We're looking forward to being able to uh, consolidate some of our costs and maintain uh, the structure better in the new building. The building will be home to community for our private music instruction, group lessons, music therapy, dance, mentor program, and ensembles. The new structure will provide space for expansion for future programs. The building is an attractive environment for future students and parents who we hope would then in turn bring other students into the program. We're very hopeful about this project and the potential it gives to the school. Thank you again for your opportunity to speak about this project. Thank you for your testimony this morning. That was the last speaker uh, for this panel. That's any questions? Quick. Are there any questions from any of the council members for the panel? No, Chair, I see no none. members with questions. Thank you. I, I move to dismiss this panel then. The next panel will include Ernest Augustus. Ernest Augustus. Time starts now. Mr. Augustus, if you could unmute yourself. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, all right, all right, thank you. My name is Ernest Augustus, and I'm on the Land Use Committee of uh, Community Board 2. Uh, with regard to 130 South Felix, when the Land Use Committee conducted its public hearing on this, uh, on this location, uh, most of the speakers failed to really speak specifically to the land use item. They didn't speak specifically to the landmarking issue, nor did they speak specifically to the design uh, of this uh, uh, site. Uh, uh, the Department of City, uh, of the uh, Department of um, uh, Landmarks were spot on when they said that the site with the proposed building was out of scale, that it's violated the BAM Historic District. It basically violated the Fort Green contextual zoning, which is still on the books. Uh, I, again, it's the issue of the uh, 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 of the land use and the design of the building it had nothing to do with programs. Uh, people who talk about the program fail to even acknowledge that this building is out of character and it does harm uh, to the to the community that they are finding so so attractive. The other issue is that the ULIP itself, the application, is defective. There's an issue regarding whether this unit is for the BAM uh, music school or for the BAM uh, 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 private school. Uh, we found out that there were they, you had a private school uh, mixed with a not-for-profit, and that has not been uh, clarified. The parents who send their kids to the music school are up in arms because they're rightfully so suspicious that this Euler and that this new building will only serve the, uh, the private school that's on site. Uh, there have been articles in the papers. I wish that the City Planning Commission will look at it um, and, raise some, and raise some questions about that. But in, in the end, I'm opposed to it because it does, it does harm to the, to, the, to the district, to the character of Fort Greene, uh, which this uh, hearing is all about. It's not about a program called Music School. I thank you uh, for your testimony, Mr. Augustus. 
this morning. No, no, thank you. Thank you, sir. I don't see anybody wanting to ask questions, so we're going to dismiss this panel. Please call up the next panel, Council. The next panel will include Barry Conyers, Lori Raphael, Regina Meyer, Judith Rosenfeld, and Alec Tadisi. Our first speaker on this panel will once again be Barry Conyers, who will be followed by Lori Raphael. Time starts now. Mr. Conyers, if you, uh, you're not unmuted, I don't know if you can hear me. Mr. Conyers. Okay, I'm ready. Thank you, sir. Yes, yeah, so good morning. Um, my name is Barry Conyers and I'm the head custodian for Brooklyn Music School. I have been here approximately seven months. And in that time, I have come to have a great sense of appreciation for Brooklyn Music School in several regards. First, I have a deep appreciation for the rich history associated with this location and the tradition of quality teaching, tutorial and mentoring that occurs here. I feel and see the passion of each instructor at this site. I see wonder in the eyes of the children as they discover the magic of music. I am intrigued by the idea of expansion and being able to reach out and touch more interested in embarking on the wonderful experience that music offers. I thank Brian for affording me the opportunity to be a part of something that has such a huge impact on the lives of all involved. I fully support the expansion effort. Thanks for your time. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Conyers. Laurie Raphael will be the next speaker, followed by Regina Meyer. Time starts now. Un Ms. Raphael, please unmute yourself. Thank you very much. Good morning, subcommittee members. My name is Lori Raphael, and I'm a senior vice president with the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to express our support for the project by Gotham Organization and Brooklyn Music School at 130 State Felix. The project will bring accessible arts to the area in the form of mixed use cultural center in the heart of Brooklyn and by providing affordable home ownership opportunities and reinvigorating the Brooklyn Music School. 130 Felix helps ensure the downtown Brooklyn cultural district remains a diverse and vibrant community for future generations. The Brooklyn Music School has been serving the residents of this borough for over 100 years. It is more critical than ever right now to give nonprofits opportunities to survive, grow, and serve the future generations. For the Brooklyn Music School and the greater community, this project will more than double instructional space, create a fully accessible facility, add new dance and rehearsal space and a digital music lab, enable eventual upgrade and renovation of the existing facility while maintaining services to the community, provide affordable home ownership to allow for generational accumulation of assets and ties to the community, and fill in an empty lot with contextual architecture. 130 St. Felix is the definition of transit-oriented development, and it's a welcome addition to the downtown Brooklyn Fort Greene neighborhood. Now more than ever, as the borough recovers from the impacts of COVID-19, we need investment like this that will contribute to the vibrancy of our neighborhoods. This project has the full support of the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony this morning. Regina Meyer will be the next speaker on the panel, followed by Judith Rosenfeld. Regina Time Meyer starts and now. Judith Rosenfeld. Good morning, um, Chair and members of the City Council. Um, I'm Regina Meyer, president of the Downtown Brooklyn Partnership. Um, on behalf of DBP and the three Downtown Brooklyn bis business improvement districts we represent, I'd like to express our strong support for the Music School and Gotham Organization's 130 St. Felix project. With a design that is sensitive to the heritage of the Williamsburg Savings Bank building, the proposed St. Felix Street 
project will transform the vacant mid-block lot into a new mixed-use cultural center that integrates expanded modern facilities for the music school alongside market rate and affordable home ownership homes at the heart of the cultural district and one of the most transit-rich locations in New York City. The proposed building has been respectfully designed in context with the Art Deco influences of its neighbors. The overall building height is lower than the shoulder of the bank tower, preserving the historic beloved, the building's beloved stature while transitioning to the lower scale buildings along St. Felix Street and of course to BAM and features intentional setbacks that minimize its presence. This project will enable the music school, a 110 year old community institution to better serve children's, uh, children, adults and seniors with 20,000 square feet of additional space. The not-for-profit music school provides free or discounted music and performing arts instruction to over 80% of its students. And it's vital that we create the opportunity to expand that within the cultural district, maintaining and increasing access to arts programming for all Brooklyn residents. In addition, the project will create up to 120 units of housing with about 36 permanently affordable home ownership units for low and moderate families earning between 70 to 100 percent of AMI. The global pandemic. I'm sorry. Okay, you can finish. Go ahead. The global pandemic and its impact on our local economy has only exacerbated afford the affordable affordability crisis in our city, and it's critical that we locate affordable housing in transit-rich locations where residents can access jobs and resources across the city and region. This is a rare opportunity for residents to own a home and build equity in downtown Brooklyn, and nowhere is home affordable home ownership more appropriate than across the street from the Atlantic Terminal Station. We enthousi enthusiastically support this plan. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony this morning. Judith Rosenfeld will be the next speaker, followed by Aleph Tedesi. Judith Rosenfeld. Time starts now. Hi, good morning. Um, thank you good to morning. the chair um, and council subcommittee for the opportunity to testify. Uh, my name is Judith Rosenfeld and I am vice president um, of special projects at Breaking Ground, the city's largest nonprofit developer and operator of permanent supportive housing. Breaking Ground testifies in support of the land use application for 130 St. Felix Street. Affordable home ownership opportunities occupy an important place in the housing continuum. And this project will allow households who may otherwise need to look far outside of the city for home ownership to instead put down roots in Brooklyn and build equity. In addition, the project will incorporate a new home for a vibrant cultural institution. At the Skimmerhorn, um, Breaking Ground supported residents in downtown Brooklyn which is just half a mile from this project, we developed a community, community space that is home to the Brooklyn Ballet, which provides education, training, and performance opportunities for underserved youth. We've seen firsthand the benefits of new practical and state-of-the-art space for the arts within the community. In the same way, 130 St. Felix offers a rare opportunity for the Brooklyn Music School to modernize and expand their instruction spaces while allowing continuous operation of their education programs. This is an incredible chance for a music education nonprofit to find a sustainable home. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your testimony. Anybody, uh, anyone else on this panel? Aleph Tedesi will be the next and last speaker on this panel. Thank you. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Okay, thank you very much. Good afternoon, city council members. Uh, my name is Aleph Tedesa and I am testifying on behalf of Riseboro Community Partnership a nonprofit community-based organization with roots in Brooklyn. The 36 units of income targeted home ownership being proposed at 130 Felix Street represents a rare opportunity for the working middle class to build equity through affordable home ownership without government subsidy. At Riseboro, or at least on behalf of Riseboro, I can attest to how challenging it is to build income targeted home ownership in New York City. Our organization has been working closely with the HPD on a home ownership project for several years, and it is very hard to make the numbers work with subsidy. Riseboro Community Partnership applauds the development team for making it work here without subsidy and at, and at targeted incomes 
below those financed by current city term sheets, which target households starting at 80% of the area median income. Thank you for the opportunity to, to submit a comment in support of this project. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, I don't see any um, hands raised from council members, so we can dismiss this panel and um, get on to the next one, council. The next panel will include Daniel Arno, Devin Mathis, Denny Salas, and Elan Lee. First speaker will be Daniel Arno, followed by Devin Mathis. Time starts now. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Arno, please continue. Excellent. My name's Daniel. Um, hello, council members. I'm the director of affordable housing at the Actors Fund. And the Actors Fund knows firsthand how important performing arts is to a community in shaping its vibrancy and culture, particularly in places like New York City and downtown Brooklyn. Our organization is dedicated to supporting the professionals in this industry among one of the hardest hit during the pandemic. We extend our support to organizations like Brooklyn Music School, who provide essential programming for over 8,000 students. And for these reasons, we support the development of 130 St. Felix Street. The proposed development will not only allow BMS to expand its programming to more students within the community, but also provide much needed affordable home ownership opportunities with 30% of the residents set aside for inclusionary housing. This will ensure that members of the community, including healthcare workers, teachers, municipal employees, and arts workers will be able to stay in the neighborhood they love and have access to the vibrant downtown Brooklyn Cultural District. The Actors Fund supports this project to bring affordable housing, home ownership, and high quality arts programming to the community. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. Devin Mathis will be the next speaker, followed by Denny Salas. Dan Devin Mathis. Time starts now. Hello, thank you. Um, my name is Devin Mathis. I am the executive director at Urban Glass. Um, I'm speaking today to express my support for the Brooklyn Music School and Gotham Organization's 130 St. Felix Street project. Urban Glass is a Fort Greene located not-for-profit encouraging access to an experimentation in glass as a creative material. We serve nearly 25,000 New Yorkers with over 400 professional artists and designers using our public access studio as their main space to create their work. Our, our artists, excuse me, our, our artist studio and art center foster community and serve as an incubator for creation and innovation. Our neighbors, Brooklyn Music School, provides quality and accessible music education to youth from a wide range of backgrounds. Additionally, it's become apparent that this longtime staple of the Fort Greene community is constrained in its current space. And that the additional space um, proposed in its expansion plans will allow for Brooklyn Music School to meet its needs and its um, growing student body, growing student body uh, with upgraded space and state-of-the-art music technology. Also, based on, um, based on my understanding of the 130 St. Felix development, it will also include affordable, uh, a, a affordable housing component. I believe in creating opportunities for families to move into or remain in Fort Greene, especially those families whose income levels would otherwise prevent them from living or owning um, a home in the neighborhood. The 130 St. Felix Street project will be a lifeblood for a cherished community music school and will create new opportunities for housing ownership. Um, it is for these reasons that I'm strongly supporting this project. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your testimony. Jenny Salas will be the next speaker on this panel followed by Elon Lee. Jenny Salas, next. Time starts now. Good morning, council members. Uh, can you guys hear me well? Just to make sure. Yes. Yes, I can. Go ahead, sir. Okay, excellent. Uh, good morning, council members. My name is Denny Salas, and I support the development proposal for 130 Felix Street. 
As Majority Leader Combo stated earlier, this is an incredible project that provides home ownership opportunities for working and middle-class New Yorkers. For too long, the ability to achieve the defined American dream of attaining equity through owning property has been stripped away through an affordab affordability crisis of our own making. This project is not a panacea to our issues, but it shows residents that we're still capable of helping them. Other supporters of this project have eloquently expressed why this pro project should move forward, so I'm not going to repeat them, but just thank you for your time, and I hope this committee votes to approve this project, and I hope you all have a great day. Have a wonderful day yourself. Thank you for your testimony. Ilan Lee will be the next and last speaker on this panel. Time starts now. Good morning, council members. My name is Elon Lee. I'm here to testify on behalf of Team Brown. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sorry. sir. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Good gotcha. morning, council members. My name is Elon Lee. I'm here to testify on behalf of Team Brown. Um, my name is uh, Elon Lee. I'm, 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 as I just said, I'm speaking today in support of the 130 uh, Philly Street project. This project is proposed on what is currently an empty lot. This project, uh, um, as a construction worker, I look at this empty lot and I see opportunity for jobs in my field. As a member of the community, I look at this empty lot and see an opportunity for affordable home ownership units and to expand home for a love nonprofit, the Brooklyn Music School. Let's put this empty lot to good work. I hope to join, I ho hope you all join me in supporting the 130 Felix Street project. And that is all. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you very much. Anyone else on this panel? Is that it, uh, Council? That was the last speaker for this panel. I don't see any questions from members of the Council. So uh, if we could bring on the next panel, this panel is dismissed. The next panel will include Bernal Greer, William Thomas, Daryl Burgess, Beth Allen, and Raisa Brown. Bernal Greer will go first, followed by William Thomas. Time starts now. Hello, have I been called? I'm not sure. Yes, you have. Please, okay. please Thank begin. You. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Uh, I'm Bernal Greer, the Executive Director of Pratt Erie Community Council, also known as Impact Brooklyn. We are the Community Development Corporation founded in 1964 with roots in Fort Greene, Clinton Hill. Our focus is affordable housing, including income targeted rentals and home ownership. We are in favor of the St. Felix um, project. The Fort Greene, Clinton Hill community has undergone significant change in the mix of racial, ethnic, and income diversity. There's an abundance of rental apartment towers along the downtown Brooklyn footprint. These buildings have sprung up as a result of zoning changes whereby commercial areas transition and it was allowed for the creation of residential housing. We at IMPACT have served as the marketing agent for several of these properties, including the Hub and One Flatbush. The demand for housing for persons with income ranging from 30% to 100% of AMI is demonstrated by the many residents using Housing Connect 2.0 and applying for these properties. Besides for serving as inclusionary and marketing agent for rental properties, Impact Brooklyn programs include first-time home buyer services where we educate those interested in home ownership to be able to navigate the process. We are members of the New York Mortgage Coalition and the Center for New York City Neighborhoods. We have an active list of clients who desire home ownership, including those in the Fort Greene Clinton Hill area. The, the 130 Felix Street project will afford a few residents the opportunity to own their residence. It is one of the only opportunities amongst the new developments that will be priced at an amount affordable to those earning 70% to 100% of area median income. We have reviewed the plans for rezoning and we respect the opinions of our friends um, in the Fort Greene Clinton Hill area. We know that gentrification is an ongoing problem, but this particular project um, in reviewing the design, the renderings are a complement to the historical nature of the area. I know that my time is running short, so I will end here. And I thank you and again in, this, in support of this project. Thank you. Thank you for testifying this morning. William Thomas will be the next speaker, followed by Daryl Burgess. William Thomas. Time starts now. 
Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, William Thomas. Uh, I'm here to support the project as the executive director of Open New York. Uh, we're an independent grassroots pro-housing organization. Uh, we support 130 St. Felix Street because allowing more homes here would both help to alleviate New York's housing shortage, uh, help to fight displacement, and also help to address our climate crisis. Uh, to, so to start, uh, New York has a terrible housing shortage. Uh, between 2010 and 2017, median rents increased by more than double median wages. Homelessness has reached the highest level since the Great Depression. And pre-COVID, one out of every 10 elementary school students in New York City public schools attended from homeless shelters. So in this environment, we need every bit of affordable housing we can muster. And the 26 below market homes one, uh, 130 St. Felix offers is a great place to start. Uh, but in addition, adding market rate homes here right on the edge of downtown Brooklyn and Port Green will also help by preventing displacement elsewhere. This is a very desirable transit rich area. And although it would be many families first choice, if they can't find a place to live here, they'll simply move to a more affordable neighborhood deeper in Brooklyn. If we don't let young professionals live here, they're not going to disappear. They're just going to merely continue to gentrify neighborhoods further in Brooklyn, like Bed-Stuy, Crown Heights, and Brownsville, while every new home here will spare a family that pressure. Uh, furthermore, this project is obviously a win for the climate, as the project is one of the most air transit-rich areas of the country, uh, two blocks away from Atlantic Terminal. Uh, in addition, the developer is seeking a waiver to eliminate parking minimums entirely. I hope the council will urge granting this waiver. Uh, New Yorkers have 30% of the carbon footprint of the average American, uh, largely because it's possible to live here without a car. Uh, the climate crisis demands that we grow in greener ways, and this project is just that. Uh, I know that a few locals disapprove the project because it may block their views from the uh, Williamsburg Savings Bank Tower. But to put it bluntly, we live in a city where there aren't enough homes for the people who want to live here. I'm exposed. There's horrifying human consequences. I ask the council to prioritize uh, solutions there. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Daryl Burgess will be the next speaker, followed by Beth Allen. Time Darryl starts now. Burgess. Good afternoon, and thank you for allowing me to speak today in support of the 130 St. Felix Street Project. My name is Daryl Burgess, and I'm the president of the Ingersoll Houses Tenant Association. I am here to express my support for this project because it will provide our neighborhood unique opportunities for equity in housing as well as education. From a housing standpoint, 130 St. Felix Street is slated to create approximately 36 condo units that will be set aside for moderate income earning households. This is a unique opportunity that we rarely have, been see have seen in our city, let alone our neighborhood, where the cost of home ownership renders this an inaccessible feat to many in the NYCHA community and beyond, thus preventing these families from participating in the key component of building generational wealth. From an educational standpoint, the Brooklyn Music School has more than demonstrated its commitment to advancing equity in the neighborhood. In fact, the Brooklyn Music School offers free or discounted instruction to over 80% of its students. The longtime Brooklyn Institution's effort to create diverse and inclusive environment with students and faculty from all different backgrounds does not go unnoticed and should be, uh, should be a framework for educational institutions across the city. Today, the Brooklyn Music School faces space constraints. When this 130 St. Felix Street project is approved, the organization will be able to more than double its instructional space, all in an expanded facility that they will own outright. This will allow the school to greatly expand the number of students it serves. I also want to add that we work very well with Team Brown Consultant, a uh, uh, construction consultant for Ingersoll Houses, and I ask that the city council members hear my voice and the voice of many who reside in city public housing, Time who expired. are asking for the opportunity to build generational wealth in a neighborhood that we love. Thank you for hearing my testimony support of the 130 St. Felix Street Project today. Darrell Burgess, Ingersoll Houses Tenant Association President. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Beth, Beth Allen will be the next speaker who will be followed by Raisa Brown. Beth Allen. Time starts now. Hi, 
Uh, my name is Beth Allen. I'm the executive director of the Downtown Brooklyn Arts Alliance, our DBAA. Uh, and I thank you very much for the opportunity to provide testimony in support of the mixed use, uh, mixed income development at 130 St. Felix Street that will house the expansion of the Brooklyn Music School. Um, DBA is a network of 60 nonprofit cultural organizations in downtown Brooklyn. Our members include every presenting arts venue situated in the Brooklyn Cultural District, as well as small galleries and other arts venues, dance and theater companies, and many others. DBA offers programming designed to strengthen arts organizations, foster collaboration, and collectively address issues in our sector and in our communities that, that affect our work. Brooklyn Music School is a longstanding member of DBA and a treasured asset in our community. As the leader of DBA, one of the things that I think about constantly is how our existing arts organizations will be able to continue to serve the growing residential pop population of downtown Brooklyn. Brooklyn Music School's explosive growth the past few years is a testament to the demand for arts education in this neighborhood. And while their growth numbers alone are impressive, the fact that 80% of classes are offered at free or reduced cost is especially important to their impact. The breadth of their offerings spanning dozens of musical and cultural traditions is especially loved and student performances for the community for community audiences at the downtown Brooklyn Arts Festival, Atlantic Antic and events in Foley Square contribute greatly to the character and identity of the neighborhood. Anyone who has visited Brooklyn Music School in recent years knows that it is bursting at the seams. Space to expand as well as for an upgraded facility is urgently needed. One of the primary things that defines Fort Greene as a cultural neighborhood is the widespread availability of high quality arts education, and in particular programs that are affordable to all, serve diverse students, and offer exposure to a wide range of artistic forms. As the neighborhood grows and changes, this project will expand the reach and impact of Brooklyn Music School's programming and allow an organization that has been contributing to the vibrancy of the community for over 100 years to thrive. We are delighted to support this project. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony this morning, this afternoon, sorry. Raisa Brown will be the next and last speaker on this panel. Time starts now. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, yes we can. Hi, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, and, uh, good afternoon. And speak on behalf of Team Brown Consultant and also in full support of the 135th, um, 130th Street Felix project. And as an independent contractor myself, I look at this as an opportunity for jobs and for the residents that live in the downtown Brooklyn area. And I'm also born and raised in the Four Green. So this is definitely something that's going to be um, and opportunities. And um, I'm in support of the project. And I hope everyone else is in full support as well. Thank you for your testimony. I don't see any questions, uh, no hands raised from other council members, so uh, we can dismiss this panel. And Mr. Chair, the next panel will include Edgar Perea and Lori Ayers Hutchinson. Edgar Perea will be the first speaker, followed by Lori Ayers Hutchinson. Time Thank starts you. now. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, on behalf of the Chinese Implant, uh, American Planning Council, I'm speaking to support the 130 Street uh, Felix Street project. For several years now, CPC has been working with the Gotham organization, the developers of this proposed development, to similarly expand uh, CPC's headquarters in the Lower East Side after a competitive selection process. The resulting plan is more than we can hope for. Together with Gotham, CPC will soon have a new state-of-the-art facility to expand our services, and importantly, we will maintain our ownership of our site. As with the proposed development of 130 Street, Felix Street, uh, St. Felix Street, we will also create permanently affordable housing and affordable senior housing, a direct result of the need we see every day in our neighborhood. Speaking from experience, Gotham is a tremendous partner. Their commitment to us, our goals, our community needs, and our project has been unwaving. As you know, well, developing in New York City is never easy. It's hours upon us for meetings, changes, tweaks, revisions, more conservation and communicative uh, before, during construction. 
Our development is next to our current affordable senior housing with 200 residents, and Gallatin has been responsive to any and all concerns. These public-private partnerships are critical in building a better, more decisive, equitable city. At CPC, we first know hand challenging the landscapes for nonprofit organizations. Projects like this, with partners not only that have talent and skills to do the work, but also take the time to understand the goals of the organizations with whom they are partnered, are the only way for nonprofits to continue to provide the services and support they provide to their constituents. I have no doubt that Gotham and their project architects have spent hours debating every detail on how building will look and feel in context within the neighborhood, being careful to respect what is exciting because it's exactly how they approach every conversation that they had with our neighbors. I'm excited to see that Gotham is using the same process for the 130 St. Felix Street project, which is contextual to the neighborhood. Simply put, Gotham is, a good, Gotham is a good partner for the community. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Thank you for your testimony. Lori Ayers Hutchinson will be the next speaker on this panel. Lori Ayers Hutchinson. Time starts now. Good afternoon. My name is Lori Ayers Hutchinson. I am a resident of Brooklyn and I appreciate the opportunity to speak on my own behalf as a resident of Brooklyn who's committed to caring for the families um, of Central Brooklyn and particularly the communities uh, of Fort Greene and those surrounding it. I just wanted to say that uh, I am here to testify on behalf of supporting this project at 130 St. Felix Street because it is meeting the needs of what is already such a rich and diverse community in maintaining that tapestry and beauty that is Brooklyn. To be able to have uh, access to housing uh, opportunities and someone already spoke about the opportunity to building generational wealth is incredible. And the fact that the developer has made room for both that and to keep and maintain what has been an institution of the arts in Brooklyn that makes affordable arts education available to our students is an amazing accomplishment. And I just wanted to say, we can't afford to not have this project go through. Um, it would be detrimental to the people of Brooklyn. It would be detrimental to the community of Fort Greene and all those who, are be, who would be directly and indirectly impacted by the loss of such an opportunity. So I just want to thank the, the council once again. Um, I hope that you will vote in favor of this project because it means so much to the families of our community. Thank you for your testimony this afternoon. Mr. Chair, that was the last speaker on this panel. Okay, I don't see any hands raised and I uh, ask you to dismiss this panel and bring on the next panel. The next panel will include uh, Alex Carrington. Alex Carrington will be the next speaker. Time starts now. Hello, this is Alex Carrington. Go ahead, sir. Hello. Yes, okay, we can hear you. you. So much, uh, thank you. Thank okay, you. Thank you so much for accepting me. Good afternoon to the good folks. Uh, I am a long time and long standing resident of Brooklyn, and I'm, I'm definitely for the project of 130 St. Felix, but more importantly, just being for the project just to continue to beautify Brooklyn, I just want to make sure of the local participation of the project as far as uh, contracting and, and employment uh, in, the con in the building of the project. But we're, we're definitely for it, and I hope you guys, you know, speed to pass it and stay strong uh, with that so that we can uh, have that affordable housing and employment through the project. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony this afternoon. I appreciate you for having that. me. Thank you. Thank you. That was the last speaker for this panel. Okay, uh, we can dismiss this panel, seeing no questions, and we can move to the next panel, please. Uh, if there are any additional members of the public who wish to testify on the 130 St. Felix Street proposal, please press the raise hand button now and uh, Mr. Chair, the meeting will briefly stand at ease while we check for uh, any additional members of the public who may have uh, registered.
Chair, I see no other members of the public uh, who wish to testify on this item. Thank you, Council. Um, seeing nobody else here to testify and no other additional business um, before the, this subcommittee today, I want to um, thank Chair Moyer and my colleagues who serve on this committee, the majority leader, uh, the subcommittee staff and the other council staffers, uh, the applicants who came out to testify today and certainly all who testified um, with regard to the applications before the subcommittee today. Mr. Chair, and before you, before you uh, gavel out, I'll just ask that you confirm that the public hearing has been closed and that the items are laid over. I will confirm that the public hearing has been closed and that the items that we heard today have been laid over. With that, seeing no other further business before this subcommittee today, I uh, close this hearing at 12.14 p.m.